Conker's Bad Fur Day was an awesome game for the N64, and we still don't understand how it got the green light. In 1998, Rare was getting too much hate for their kiddie platformer Conker's 12 Tales, and they scrapped the entire project and created a new game, one of the riskiest and unique titles on the Nintendo 64. Conker's Bad Fur Day was a game that we had to play when our parents weren't looking. A game so violent and mature, it required two warnings on the front of the box saying that it wasn't for kids. But among the over-the-top characters, who was the most good and who was the most evil? Hey guys, I'm Brad with 1UP Binge, and this is Conker's Bad Fur Day, good to evil. We're not going to include every character because the game already has a smorgasbord of characters to choose from. We're just going to be focusing on the memorable ones. Also, we decided to use from both the N64 original and the Xbox Reloaded remake. We love the original, but they did some cool redesigns in the remake. First, we have the good. These are the nice and friendly people in Conker's world that make being stuck as the king of all the land not that bad. The gold medal of good goes to Rodent. In a world as cold and unforgiving as Conker's Bad Fur Day, Rodent is the only one we can safely say has not a single mean bone in his body. He's a soldier drafted to the war and is saved by Conker, an old friend of his. Presumably, he was one of the soldiers Conker was partying with the night before, but we're not 100% sure on it. We are sure that he's a much kinder squirrel than Conker. With his armor making him impervious to damage, he lets Conker use him as a shield, taking any explosive damage that would have killed Conker. He also helps Conker pilot the tank to help him get into the hideout of the Teddies, and even defeat the experiment the Teddies have down there, and plan to use for their own purpose. He doesn't have any negative marks on him. You know he's a good guy when even Conker treats him with respect. Taking the silver, we have the pitchfork, Frankie. First meeting him in the barn, he gets angry at Conker for trespassing into the farm and tries to run him down by poking at his behind. This kills all the haystacks he was supposed to be protecting. This leads to him getting derided by Ron and Reg into just killing himself by hanging. This raises a lot of questions, like how can he choke himself without a neck? Well, he can't, and he's stuck until Conker cuts him loose. After that, he becomes Conker's friend, helping him fight the Haybot. Despite his rough introduction, he's Conker's friend, and in a world that is messed up as this, he's definitely worth keeping around. In third place, we have Mrs. Queen Bee. After a breakup with a cheating husband, she's the remaining leader of her hive, before it's stolen by Wayne and the Wankas. Yeah, that's the name of the group. She is distraught by the loss, crying over her lost hive when Conker meets her, and agrees to pay Conker's extortion to have him get the hive back. What puts her lower than the other two is that she's only crying about it and not doing anything. She does say her husband usually deals with them, but she isn't useless. She can use a turret gun to kill Wasp. Aside from crying and hoping for someone else to solve her problems, she's a good ruler. Next is the leader of the Squirrel High Command, the SHC Sergeant. He enlists the help of Conker to get his ships unblocked, only to reward Conker by smacking him on the head and knocking him out. It's war once again. He already thought that Conker was going to join at this point, given how Conker wandered into a military recruitment zone all on his own. Plus, Conker got two people killed to get the blockade open, so it's not completely unwarranted. Still, it's not a noble move of him. However, he has an interest in his job. He helps his soldiers get back on the boats before they leave the Teddy's base. And he also understands the horrors of war. He even compliments his troops and pauses to remember the squirrels that die in the multiplayer mode. Despite being blunt, he cares about his troops and soldiers like his own kids. Next in line is Greg the Grim Reaper. And don't laugh because of how short and high-pitched his voice is. My name's Greg. How many Grim Reapers do you know? Being the Grim Reaper, he's tasked with guiding the dead to their proper resting place, including Conker. Well, except for one part that he really hates, Conker is a squirrel, even if Conker tries to tell you he's an elephant. Squirrels in this land can apparently get as many lives as they think they can get away with. Even if Greg hates the role as much as he hates cats, which to be fair is the worst part about Greg, he's willing to help Conker and tell him all the rules, even if he heavily dislikes them. He also warns Conker about the zombies in the spooky chapter, giving him a shotgun to kill the zombies. He's blunt and rude, but he's doing his job, and he hates it when his job gets complicated. A relatable motive for a pretty reasonable guy. Next is Jugga. 
She was originally with Bug of the Nut, but after he was defeated, she told Conker that she would always love him. I love you always. Although it was obvious that Conker would have liked her to stick around for obvious reasons, it just wasn't in the cards for him. Our last entry for the good is Beardy. <laughs> we mean Birdie. Birdie is the first face Conker meets after waking from his hangover. He tells Conker all about the contact-sensitive pads around the world for free. Of course, this doesn't stop him from taking any beard that Conker produces with the B button, or charging him for giving him the manual to learn about everything else in the game. You see those buttons? He is greedy by forcing Conker to cough up money, but compared to the other bizarre faces Conker meets, this scarecrow is less scary than them. The fair trade of money for a guide is much more reasonable than what the other members of this world can do. With the good done, we now move into the neutral territory. This is the gray area. Starting us off, we have the Ooga Boogas. They are a tribe of cavemen resting underneath the earth, worshiping a giant stone T-Rex head. Conker accidentally fell on a Ooga Booga and killed him, but once Conker got the headpiece pelt, they became friendly with him, helping him get into the club after the Rockmen blocked his way. This treaty doesn't last. Thanks to Don Weezo forcing Conker's hand, Conker has to throw a lit bomb into the place's lava pit to kill the Ooga Boogas. They try to fight Conker after this, but Conker pretty much destroyed their world, so their anger is justified. Overall, they were a civilization that got caught up in Conker's attempts to go home. Up next, we have the girlfriend to Conker, Barry. We don't see much of Barry. She's just at home exercising before getting kidnapped, forced to be a stripper for the Uggas in their club. After Conker frees her, she runs off, and when asked if she knows who Conker was in his caveman disguise, she has no idea. Being stood up by him probably didn't do him any favors, but considering how she didn't even know it was the same guy who freed her, it shows how oblivious Barry is. She makes a return in the final level, helping Conker rob a bank for Don Weezo in a Matrix parody, only to get mowed down by the Don. It was a sudden end for her, and even more sudden considering that we don't know much about her. Next is Conker. Conker is Barry's boyfriend. He skips out on going home to get drunk with soldiers before they get shipped to fight the war against the Teddies. Completely lost and wasted, Conker tries to find his way home. Running into a variety of colorful characters, both nice and mean, Conker is a sane man to the world's antics, commenting on how ridiculous everything is. Breath. She's a sunflower. He's willing to lend a hand, but most of the time it's because he can get some benefit out of it. He lets a baby dinosaur die for his own sake. He forces the queen bee to quadruple her pay to get him to get her hive back a second time, and toys with leaving Barry for Jugga. That said, he has good moments. Even if it was for his own greed, he's willing to help out anyone he comes across. Even then, he isn't above helping others without any monetary reward. He stops Ron and Reg from verbally abusing Frankie, and even aids Frankie in reattaching his body. He's friendly with Fangy, the baby dinosaur that was about to eat him, bonding with him after fighting Bugga. He's also an ally to Rodent, seeing him as an old friend, and was saddened about his supposed death. He also cares for Barry, and is depressed after seeing her gunned down and blowing his chance to get her back from the programmer. It makes sense in context, trust us. Conker is a squirrel with a lot of layers, and you get to see them all during his bad fur day. Now we have the leader of the Ugga Boogas, Bugga the Nut. Bugga will not conquer around by sending a dinosaur and minions after him to show off his giant bone. He's just compensating for being smaller, uh, you know, down, down there. He's very sensitive about it. He'll get riled up to fight Conker by having his girlfriend tease him about his small bone size. He rules over the gladiatorial ring with an iron club, all for the sake of protecting his manhood. He's one of those guys who buy big, fancy sports cars just to prove themselves as man enough for their girlfriends. It's just that this time, they're also capable of beating up people who look at their land down under funny. And with Conker using Fangy to bite off enough of Bugga's behind and leaving him with a small waistline to expose his small bone, Bugga realized that messing with Conker was his biggest boner ever. We mean boner as in the old time way of saying mistake. No, no, seriously, that's what it once meant. Look it up. Next is Mr. King B. Mr. King B cheated on his wife and got kicked out. However, it seems like he hasn't learned his lesson and requested Conker to help him get laid with a sunflower. Conker, honey, fancy going for a bounce? 
He tries to bum money out of Conquer despite being a king and having enough money of his own. After pollinating the sunflower, he doesn't follow through on his promise of paying Conquer or even trying to return home, letting the hive get kidnapped again. That said, he isn't any further down the list due to how he was once able to protect the hive. However, once the love and passion was gone for Queen Bee, he also stopped protecting the hive and never came back, letting us place him this low. Swimming around here is the Catfish Group. A group of seemingly rich and stuck-up catfish, they enlist the help of Conker to help them tie up a bulldogfish and help get their money back. They're just a couple of problems, namely that they just push this task onto Conker without him having any say. They trick him into thinking he's going to get a larger reward, even though it's only a dollar for all of his work. We'll get you 10%. That's a fun lot of From getting the bulldog fish tied up, climbing a dangerous structure, and dealing with the fire imps, that is a lot of danger for just a dollar. Conker is greedy, but we don't blame him for pocketing the money. This is one group of cats and fish we're okay with Greg killing off. Next is the experiment, also known as the little girl. Originally just a regular sweet squirrel girl, she was kidnapped by the Teddy's army to be tormented, experimented on, and killed, only to be revived to become a weapon for the Teddy's army. She meets Conker and tells him how to destroy the submarines with a missile. After Conker helps her destroy the submarines, she tries to get Conker and Rodic killed by blowing them up, be it from her own tools of war or blowing up the island. She was forced to be like this. She was experimented on and forced to become who she is today, a giant monster for the Teddies to use. It's a tragic ending for her, especially she was practically forced to be evil and destructive. She's a boss and enemy, but she has no choice. Finally, we have the bad to evil. There's no easy way of saying this. You're going to be seeing a lot of villainous and evil faces. Not all of them are going to be doing advertiser-friendly things. You've been warned. These guys are the worst of the land and the most disgusting in terms of morality. We have the great Mighty Pooh. Yes, really, a giant pile of finkel matter. This beast of Pooh Mountain picks off and dung beetles that try to come into his home. Conker first feeds him corn chips to draw him out of hiding. After this meal, he decides to throw his self at Conker, hoping to damage him enough where he can ram him up his butt. Yes, his butt. Considering that Conker willingly fed the great Mighty Pooh corn, this is ungrateful at best and evil at worst. That said, he only attacks anyone that goes into Pooh Mountain, so he isn't that much of a threat. Besides, why would you go to a mountain of Pooh? Oh, no! Next is the Fire Imps. The Fire Imps revel and laugh in their rude and gross antics acting like a bunch of college frat boys. With how drunk they are and how volatile they can be, they make Conker look like the better drunk by a landslide. When they first see Conker, their thoughts are all about trying to light him up. They love causing fires, no matter if it causes harm to others. These pyromaniacs want to see Conker light up like a campfire, and when Conker fights back against them, they try to kill him with their robotic boiler. There are a lot of fire imps and they are very dangerous, so make sure to have a fire extinguisher. Now we have Wayne and the Wankas. These wasps are as vile and vicious as real-life wasps. These clones of the Donkey Kong Country Zingers are after the hive of the Queen Bee, and they keep the hive to themselves. When Conker tries to steal the hive back for Queen Bee, they're furious at him for stealing their new hive, even though they stole it in the first place. It's hypocritical, doubly so when they steal the hive again. According to Queen Bee, this is a recurring problem that her husband sorts out, meaning they keep getting blown up and never learn their lesson. They're as nice as real-life wasp, so at least Rare was accurate to the source material this time around. Entering the top five, we have the Panther King. The Panther King was the victor of the Great Milk War. He got his power after betraying the Kulas and destroying the legs of the Professor. Ever since then, he's been resting on his throne, enjoying his milk till his table spilled over. He's more obsessed over how to fix his table than he is about anything else. This leads to all his subjects denouncing him and hating him, especially when he has to bring out the duct tape. He sends his lackeys to do all the work for him, even if he doesn't care about how violent they have to be. He lets Don Weasel shoot Barry after all. He also kidnapped Conker and forced him to live the rest of his life as a table leg. It makes sense, we promise. Even if he isn't the most active threat to the kingdom, he's still a very despicable panther. 
Now we have Count Batula. This homage to Bram Stoker's Dracula is Cocker's ancestor. He's from a time when the Panthers and Squirrels were allies. Now, however, he's living in an old castle, feeding off the residents of the land and drinking their blood. While normally welcoming to Conquer, he shows his anger after Conquer disses one of his ancestors. He'll kill and drink Conquer's blood, showing that family ties mean nothing. He instead turns Conquer into a bat and forces him to gather him residents of the town so he can keep drinking their blood. He has a complex machine for the sole purpose of being able to stay in one place and constantly drink off the innocent town folks. Of course, this said machine is his downfall, dying after falling in. Because he eats innocent people and doesn't care about his family, Count Batula has found himself falling down this low on our list. The bronze medal of evil goes to the Teddies. These German Nazi parodies are the enemy group that the squirrels are facing in the war chapter of Conker's story. Teddies? I hate these guys. These dastardly bears are experimenting on living squirrels. One of these results is in the form of the experiment, showing that the Teddies aren't afraid or ashamed of their dark morals. They were even more obvious about their Nazi inspiration in the beta game, before Nintendo told Rare to tone it down. Some stuff that isn't toned down, however, is them capturing squirrels in the multiplayer mode, plan to take over Paris by summer, and use overpowered weapons to keep refugees from reaching Paris. Considering that they were created for war, it makes sense that being violent and destructive is all these teddy bears can do. These nasty bears are one of the more serious threats Conker faced in his journey, letting them stay this low on the list. With the silver medal, we have the Professor, aka Professor Von Cripplespack. Yes, they really gave the legless character a name with the word cripple in it. Once an enemy to the Panther King, he was defeated, got his leg ripped off by the Panther King, and was forced to serve him. However, he's been planning behind his back all this time, waiting to strike. When the Panther King needs a new table for his milk, the professor purposely chose to get Conker to take place as the leg instead of just getting an actual wooden table leg. This was all part of his plan to not only get rid of Conker, but also the king. He wanted revenge for being humiliated for so long by the Panther King, and his plan ended up with him not only creating the teddies to continue the war in his stead, but also for killing the Panther King by using his body to hatch a xenomorph to tear out his stomach before killing Conker. And yes, this is basically a xenomorph. Let's not kid ourselves. If this isn't a xenomorph, it's a lawsuit away from becoming one. This is also why he didn't end up with the gold, as the professor seems genuinely happy and proud of his xenomorph, even giving him a name, Heinrich. He even tells him to ignore Conker calling him ugly. That said, this alien is where all of his love goes, and aside from that, he is much more vile than the Panther King. Finally, we have the worst of the worst. The gold medal of evil goes to Don Weezo. He is the head of the Mafia organization. We first get to see how serious he is when he suspects Pauly of disrespecting him, even beating him to a pulp as the others watch in horror. In comparison to the other cartoonish deaths and violence, this is drawn out, realistic, and everyone treats it seriously. This is only the start of the Don's misdeeds, as he soon requests for Conquer to destroy the world of the Ooga Boogas by blowing them up with a bomb. The entire extinction of one civilization, and for what reason? because he thinks they're not in touch with the ecosystem around him? They seem totally out of place in this ecosystem. Basically, he's racist towards the Ooga Boogas and forces Conker to finish them off. That's horrible, and he gets worse at the end of the game, with him forcing Conker and Barry to work for him, only to kill Barry after she does her job that he gave her. Like, he's the reason this game ends so dark. He doesn't even care about his own workers. In the multiplayer mode, he knows that everyone is out for the same thing, that being getting him more money, but tells him that it's a free-for-all, and if they lose, he'll just drown the loser in a river with cement shoes. He buys the winner drinks, but knowing how he works, they'll probably be joining Polly in the afterlife sooner or later. Being responsible for the death of his own co-workers, the death of an entire underground city, and the death of Barry, as well as the dark ending this game has, Don Weezo is the most evil character in this game. He made us an offer we couldn't refuse, putting this high up. Right, where's the next job? And that's the list. Was there any character you think we ranked too fairly or harshly? Yell at us in the comments below. Make sure to hit that notification bell, and if you need a one-up, binge our good to evil playlist. Thanks for watching.